Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about exponential moving averages and Fibonacci. Um, one thing you want to do is just pull up a chart. Um, if you want to follow the example I've got, it's ADA, and I'm looking at it on a daily chart. Uh, Fibonacci and exponential moving averages obviously can work on all time frames, but in this example, I'm going to use a daily chart. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is right over here where this little magnet is. You want to make sure that that's highlighted on your exponential moving averages. To add them, you want to go up here to the indicators, click that, scroll down until you see moving average exponential. Once you click on that, you should just have one line on your chart. Then you can go over and right click it and then you can do a format okay so the numbers that I use on mine and I have uh, the 10 EMA obviously so you can change that number to a 10 okay on style I usually try to keep it a little bit thinner than the other moving averages because the higher the number the thicker the line so I can identify it better so click OK once you have that in, and then you proceed to the next one. The next one I have is a 20-day EMA, so you can add that one and change it. Then you can go to a 50 and add it, and et cetera, and et cetera. Now, the only ones I use are a 10, 20, 50, and a 200-day moving average, okay? Exponential moving average. So those are the ones I use, and so I'll explain what we're looking at, okay? so. When you've got an uptrend, obviously everything in a bull market, and I'll scroll out just a little bit, and this one didn't have a whole lot of data, but you can see where it breaks out here and everything is chasing, I mean, upwards. That's your exponential moving average. The minute that it starts getting too far away from, say, like the 50, then you can almost expect a, a drop at some point. They're going to come back and they're going to test those moving averages. So that's the one thing you have to watch out for. So we've got the 50 EMA right here. It breaks it. And then once you get the 10 and the 20 crossing back over each other, then the 10 starts leading it down. And you can see where it had a hard time getting back above the 10 EMA. And if it did, it couldn't get past the 20. So now we come back over here. And this is back in March. So it finally hits a bottom. But how did we come to that bottom? Okay, so what, that's where Fibonacci comes into play. So we're going to take this little indicator right here, just down below where your trend line is. We're going to click on it, and we're going to go Fibonacci retracement. Okay, and so... I don't like to use this big long candle right here. That's obviously the day it first started. But what we can do is we can click down at the very bottom. This magnet right here will make sure that you click on the bottom price and it's not guessing where the bottom is. So you click on that and you can come back up to a top. And so when it gets up here, It gets down and it hits the 78.6 and drops below it, okay? But here's, here's where other indicators come into place, or TA. So you can take a horizontal ray, you can come back over here, and you click on that, and that was an old area right there where it came back down and tested when it was making the bull run, comes over here, and that's where it held up. On the way up, it comes back up, gets over the 78.6, retests it before marching higher. Now, once we have a trend in place and so-called bottom, then we can take this out and we're going to take this out. And now we're going to try to figure out where we're bouncing to. And this is for long-term holders. I'll get into a 
shorter time frame here in just a second. But this is where you have to look at long-term views and then you can start working your way back in because if it starts making a big move, people tend to overlook where a bigger resistance or support was, okay? So let's go here and do another Fibonacci. And we're gonna click on this top and we're gonna go down to this bottom. So basically what we have here is from this top to this bottom, it worked its way up and it's hitting resistance at the 38.2 retracement. Now the other thing I'm looking at is the exponential moving averages. I would stay bearish this whole way down as far as a long-term holder until I start to see these lines starting to get closer to each other. When they start getting closer to each other and the 50 flattens out and now you've got your 10 and your 20 holding and trying to hook up and then they push through. That gets you the move up then you're looking to your Fibonacci for your as far as targets. 38.2 would be your first. You could, If you're a long-term holder, you could always take some off the table and then wait until it dips to add again, or you still have some left over in case it runs. So that is on this little move right here. Now obviously it retraced back down off this, so now what we can do is we can do another Fibonacci retracement. And we'll take it down from this bottom to this high. Okay, now one thing you'll wanna do is when you get this, you're gonna see all kinds of numbers and you can already see where it broke through some prices. So if you wanted to see it a little clearer, just right click on this, hit format, move this over so you can see and then just take out the Fibonacci's that it broke through. So it broke through the 38.2, we're gonna uncheck it, we're gonna uncheck the 50, and we're gonna uncheck the 61.8. And so it got close to the 78.6, which is a very important Fibonacci. Usually reversals are made off that number. Um, if broken, then it usually proceeds to the 127.2. In most cases so right now it's hitting or it came close to this area down here 78.6 didn't quite get there so that would lead me to believe where the EMAs are now they've crossed back over and now it's kind of stuck in no man's land and it's below the 50 EMA so would I be long this no I would not I would wait for confirmation because this down here hasn't hit yet and it still could hit. So there's times where you just have to move on if something's not clear, you have to move on to something else. Now if you're a swing trader, then you can come over and you can look at a four hour chart. And we're gonna go in and take a look at this. Okay, so you'll notice in that whole downtrend, here's your 200 day moving average. And usually when you see a thickening or a widening gap right here in your moving averages, that means stronger the resistance or stronger the support. Okay, and at some point though, when it gets too far, it is going to make a turn. But in this case, you can see it had to wait until the 200 day moving average got hit down in here before it wanted to turn and go up. All these moving averages converge and then it turns it back up. So that's what you got on the four hour chart. Now, if you wanted to do a Fibonacci on this, you're basically looking at swing highs and swing lows, okay? So we're gonna start over here. And if somebody was to take a position or wanted to, you click on that and then you come over here and you click on the high and you can see where it came down and hit this 78.6 retracement and that turned it around and it reversed off that okay so you would still probably want to keep that Fibonacci up there just in case it did break the 78.6 that you could come down 
and take a look at the where it is at the 127.2. That would give you support if it makes a lower low. Now that we've made that low, we can do another retracement from here down to this low. And now you'll have to go back in and format it again and add in your other retracements. 23.6, 61.8. And so on the way up, it was breaking all these, okay? So we're going to go in and we're going to take out the 23.6. We'll kind of clean it up so you can see what's going on. All right. And so it gets up to this 78.6 before it turns back down, but then it holds the 50 EMA right here. So we know where that top was. It's going to come down and it's going to test the 50 EMA. Let's go ahead and just remove all this out. And if you wanted to see the Fibonacci that it hit at the 50 to be able to maybe take that trade then you draw it from swing high to swing low and there we go take that out so from here to here with those moving averages getting closer it held a 50 percent retracement before finally making the next move higher Now, one thing you might want to, um, when you see on my, on my charts, is you want to look for FIB clusters, okay? And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so everybody can see this clearly. But one thing I like to do is I look, like to look at FIB clusters. And that's an area where I draw several retracements. And then if anything lines up on top of each other, it's normally going to be pretty good support or uh, big time resistance. So we're going to, on this one, start from here down to here. And then I'm going to add the fibs. Since that was a swing high, that's why I'm using it and I'm taking it down to a swing low. And then I'm adding, so it passed the 23.6, actually hit this 38.2, so that's one. And then I'm going to take it from this little swing area and see if anything lines up. And that's basically what you're doing. You're just moving it down to see if any other fibs line up in that spot. So I'm going to format that. I'm going to come over, pass the 38.2, and it passed the 50 on that. Just want to make sure I've got the 78.6, and there we go. So when you're going, in, and obviously we're looking back in time, but from here to here and from here to here and right there is where you come up with a fib cluster and they're really close together within 30 sats so that tells me and it's a 38.2 and it's a 78.6 combination that is very strong that is very strong resistance right there not to mention that you've got the exponential moving average, the 200 day, hooking down. So as it's coming up, the 200 is coming down, and so it finds that resistance. Now, even though it made the nice bullish move here with your smaller moving averages, that's where you get a swing trade. 
that's a swing trade for you. But you're, unless you're long term, you're looking at a swing trade right there. So now we have to go and we have to look at and see what's going on now. And I'm going to take out the 61.8 because it did pass that on that one move. So I'm going to zoom in, keeping in mind that we have this Fib cluster up here. And now I'm going to draw another Fibonacci from this high, or I mean this low, up to this high. Now I'm going to format it. I'm going to go in. And I'm going to add back, so it's past the 38.2, and it held the 50. I'm going to add the 61.8. The 78.6 is already in there. So now we can see where it bounced off this move. It bounced off the 61.8 retracement. Now it's trying to get back through the 10 EMA and the 20 EMA and maybe wanting to test the 200-day moving average. But what do we have to do? We have to go in, and now that we've made a, a higher high right here, we're going to go in and add another Fibonacci. So click there and draw it down to here. And then we're going to format it. And right now, it looks like it barely went above the 50. So I'm going to take it out. And so now, here is where you've got your upside resistance. And if we were to look at it, this 200-day moving average is coming down to the 78.6. So we could naturally take a look at this and say, Okay, the, the 10 EMA is holding right here. It's starting to curl. And as long as that holds, you can take a trade with a stop loss. Depending on your risk is where you would want to put your stop loss. Right now, the stop loss, at least for me, would be the 10 EMA. Depending on your risk is going to determine where you want your stop. So... The 10 EMA, or just actually below it, would be my stop loss. And then you could actually take a trade, possibly up to the 78.6 retracement. Now, I'm just throwing this out there hypothetically for learning lessons. I do not have a position in this, so I wanted to get that disclaimer out there. I just picked this chart because it was in the A's, and, and I'm just <laughs> it was easy to kind of spot. Um, so anyway, that's what I've got on Fibonacci and exponential moving averages um, and Fib clusters. So you look at all those combined as well as your stochastic RSI. It can give you clues. Some moves may not be as much as others, depending on where moving averages and Fibonacci is. So that's always something to look at. You're not looking at just trading a stochastic RSI. It can stay oversold. Okay, so right here, everybody's thinking bottom, and what happened? It went lower. So anybody trying to play that, unless they had a wide stop loss, was going to get taken out. So you're waiting for confirmation waiting for confirmation, get above the 10 EMA, watch your Fibonacci, pick spots to get in. You don't have to rush in, but this is Fibonacci and this is exponential moving averages and how I look at it. So I hope this helps and um, let us know if you have, have any questions. Thanks.